Hi, this is David Das from Motu. In this day and age, a lot of us are doing our own engineering, meaning we're the performer and we're hitting our own record button, and oftentimes we're doing the mixing and the editing for ourselves afterwards. In this movie, I'm going to show you some of my favorite techniques for loop recording in DP. It's a really quick way to build up stacks for background vocals or horn sections or anything that you can record in a riff or a phrase. Uh, there's a really easy, simple, fun way to do that in DP. What I'm going to do is take a band track and overdub layers of horns on it. I've got the track set up here, so have a listen to it and you'll hear some MIDI horns, which are placeholders for what I'm about to record. The key to using this technique is to switch on overdub mode, then set up a memory cycle point, which is basically like repeat bars. I do this by selecting the area I want to loop, and then I'll go to the transport and choose set to selection bounds. Before I do some takes, let me show you what's going to happen. When I hit record, DP is going to record a pass, then it's going to loop back, and here's the key. It's going to increment the take automatically for me as I record. This can go on as long as I need it to. Okay, so let me stop there. I'm going to undo that, and let's do some real takes now. Because I have infinite looping going on, I'm not going to worry too much about perfection. I'm sure my first few takes will be warm-ups, but once my lips warm up to the trumpet, I should be able to get some keeper takes. When I'm confident I've nailed the top part, I'll just move on to the harmony. Here we go. Now that I'm done with the recording, I'm going to add six new mono audio tracks because I'd like to keep two takes of the upper trumpet harmony, two takes of the lower trumpet harmony, and two takes of the trombone harmony. In the mixer, I'd also like to pan them around a little bit. So let's listen down to the takes and pick our keepers. I've enlarged the sequence editor to show my catch track, as I call it, as well as the six destination tracks. Now I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut to take me through the takes sequentially. So I can listen to any of them, like this one. That one sounds good to me, so I'm going to option drag it to one of the keeper takes, and then I'll go and audition a different one. There's one dud note in that, so I'll go on and find another. There's a dud note in that one too. Let's jump ahead in the story. Offline, I've gone ahead and listened to all these takes and chosen the best ones so you don't have to sit through this. But I will show you the process of dragging each of them to their final destination tracks. Now that I have the six keeper takes in place, I'm going to mute the original catch-all take, then option click the play triangles for these six, which is going to solo them so I can hear them by themselves. They seem to work well together. I'm not going to worry too much about the edges just yet, because DP is smart enough to have recorded continuously, so the edges are very easy to recover. All I have to do is select all of these, position my mouse at the edge of one of them, and drag. 
Over to the right, you can see the beginning of the next take in the performance. But I don't need that. All I need to get is the natural release of the keeper take. And then I'll fade down there. And let me do the same thing for the beginning. I've always thought the traditional way of recording can be a little bit unnatural, as in there's an engineer and the performer, and is everybody ready, quiet, we're hitting record, we hit record, and suddenly the performer's on the spot just to deliver the perfect take, um, or there's disappointment. And using this loop recording technique really frees you from that because it allows you to get more in the flow of the groove and just enjoy the music and not worry too much about whether every single take is absolutely perfect, but it just lets you enjoy it more. So I've used this with great success. Like I said, background vocals, horn sessions, anything that can be done repetitively like that. I've even used it over like a long loop of, a, of an entire verse of a song. Just let the singer get into the groove and try a few different things without the pressure of, uh, of constant self-examination.